Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Marisa. Hello, everyone. Welcome and thanks for joining us here today. I'm really excited to be here uh, to talk more about the TARS project and also about the TARS Foundation. Um, before we get started, I'd like to briefly introduce myself. So my name is Isabella Ferreira. I am currently doing the last year of my PhD in computer engineering at Polytechnic Montreal here in Canada. And I am very interested in studying the technical and social aspects of software engineering and particularly open source development. And because of that, in 2019, I had the opportunity to do a summer internship at Tencent where I got to know more about TARS and also to work with this open source project. So since then I've been working with TARS and I'm currently an ambassador at the TARS Foundation in which I write technical content and I also give technical talks like this one. So here on the left side, you have my contact information in case you'd like to reach out to me. And yeah, that's it about me. So let's talk about microservices. So the main topic of this presentation is microservices. So since I don't know if you are all familiar with it, I'm gonna go over some of the main concepts so we can all be on the same page. And why microservices and why is it important? So experts predict that by the end of this year, 90% of all applications will be actually developed using the microservices architecture. And that means that as applications grow, companies are moving their locally hosted applications to the cloud. And the main goal of doing that, of using microservices and deploying applications in the cloud is actually to minimize downtime, optimize resources and reduce infrastructure and maintenance costs. So what are microservices? So microservices is actually an architectural pattern uh, based on the single responsibility principle. So that means that uh, we have small services that have all the same responsibility and the same functionality, everything inside a single service. And services that have different responsibilities, they, they become different services basically. And uh, the microservices architecture is also extended to the concept of loosely coupled services, which means that uh, each service can be developed, deployed, and also maintained independently. So I'll go over some of some uh, of some examples of this concept, and it will be clear. So with microservices, developers can actually develop a single application composed of very small interconnected services, each running its own process, and they often communicate with the lightweight mechanism mechanisms such as an API. And there is a bare, very bare minimum of centralized management of these services, and they can be developed using different programming languages and also different store, data store technologies. So microservices, they are often compared to traditional monolithic software architectures. And, but why and what is the difference between monolithic architecture and microservices? So basically in monolithic applications, the software is self-contained, uh, meaning that the components of the program, they are all interconnected and independent rather than loosely coupled. Also each component and its associated components must be presented in order for the code to be executed or compiled. And if any component needs to be updated, then the whole application needs to be updated as well. And that becomes a big problem when we are talking about big systems. However, in microservices, each module is independent and can be changed without affecting other parts of the program. Also, there is a reduced risk that a change made to, the, to one component will create unanticipated change in another component. And microservices help scale and to perform maintenance tasks since a complex task needs to be broken, broken down into smaller components. So here on the left side, we have an example of a monolithic architecture in which there is one layer for the user interface, another one for the business logic, and another one for the data access, which is the only layer that can access the database. On the right side, we present the microservice architecture. As you can see here, each layer from the monolithic architecture is broken down into one or more microservices. And in the lower layer, all microservices um, have access to the database. And by isolating the functionalities like this, the application can be easily tested and it has a higher fault tolerance when compared to a more complex setup. 
So many industries have changed their architecture to microservices. Uh, for example, Netflix uh, experienced a major database corruption when they started, when they were uh, shipping DVDs uh, to their members at that time. And actually they needed to move away from single points of failure, such as relational databases towards a more scalable and reliable distributed system. Uh, and they moved their application to the cloud using microservices. And as we know today, Netflix streams more than 250 million hours of content daily. Uh, also, we have an example of Uber. Uh, after they launched the application for the first time, they, they were struggling to add new features and also to fix bugs and integrate new changes. So they decided to change to microservice and uh, now, each, each feature of Uber, such as passenger management and trip management, is an independent service. Also, Amazon had to refactor their monolithic architecture from scratch. And after that, they became a very, very valuable company in the world because they were able to make fast, faster releases. So we know that not everything is perfect. And with microservices, that's not different. So there are five significant challenges when developing microservices, and that is uh, including uh, problems in development, in service governance, mode programming language support, and high performance and high concurrency. That, um, those things are very hard to achieve when using a microservice framework. And TARS is one of the microservice framework that helps to address these challenges. So TARS helps developers to focus on the business logic. And um, through encapsulation, uh, the microservice will be invoked across machines and developer need to deal, don't need to deal, deal with communication problems such as timeouts and networks anomalies. And for that, TARS allow developers to use a variety of protocols, transmission, and also programming techniques. So TARS also focuses on the service governance by providing the features such as service register and discovery, load balance, overload protection, and distributed tracing. And usually here, for example, the client will request the addresses of all servers from a registry node, and the service will deal with the load balance strategy and also report which services are alive. And <clears throat> We also contact the monitor to uh, create some logs about remote configuration and also distributed tracing. TARS also supports five different programming languages, allowing uh, teams to choose either Go, C++, Node.js, PHP, or Java for development. So that gives more flexibility to teams that prefer to use different programming languages. And also TARS help, uh, provides a high performance and high concurrency architecture. So with the increase of users and traffic, performance needs to be guaranteed in the face of massive requests. And here we have an example of the performance of TARS. So in the X um, axis, we have the different microservice framework, either TARS developed in different programming languages or other frameworks such as Spring Cloud and gRPC. So we test and the, the y-axis, we have the number of transactions per second. And as you can see here, TAR C++, TARS Go, and TAR Java have the highest performance if compared to other frameworks. So what about the applications and use case of TARS? So TARS is serving a variety of industries. As you can see here, those are all the games, uh, FinTech applications, social networks that use the TARS framework. Uh, in the back end. And we have been supporting many, many industries now for more than 10 years. So we believe that TARS can help industries to reduce costs. For example, microservices can be one of them, uh, help one of them and store uh, different services in different machines into small granularity commodity hardware. Um, also, we think that TARS can help industries to scale out so for example, here, there might exist specific periods in the year or specific events such as the Black Friday, uh, which will require a system architecture to be scalable, have high performance and also be fault tolerant. And in this case, the application needs to know how to scale for a huge amount of users and also the servers uh, need to be flexible. 
And this can be done with TARS using, for example, the name, name service and load balances strategies. So if you are interested about TARS, TARS is open source and you can find more about it in our GitHub repository. Uh, currently, there are different ways of deploying TARS and we have a YouTube channel uh, where we have a playlist for beginners on how to deploy TARS so you can check it out if you're interested. Uh, basically, we teach in the videos how to deploy TARS manually, so basically installing all the libraries from scratch. Also, you can install TARS through Docker or you can use Kubernetes. So this approach also creates the opportunity for microservices to be self-healing. Uh, basically with the orchestration tools such as Kubernetes, um, the self-healing can be without human intervention and you don't need to worry about that. And this is the newest way that we can deploy TARS with. So please check it out our YouTube channel and uh, there is a tutorial on how to deploy TARS and also a Hello World um, application that you can develop to, to get to know TARS a little bit more. Uh, so now that you know a bit about the TARS project, I'd like to introduce the TARS Foundation to you. So the TARS Foundation is a nonprofit open source microservices foundation under the Linux Foundation. And um, so basically the TARS Foundation is one of the Linux Foundation projects that focuses on building a new generation of microservices ecosystem by solving the microservices problems and challenges that I mentioned before. <clears throat> so our mission is to build a neutral home for open source microservices projects that empower any industry to quickly turn ideas into applications um, at scale. So we believe that uh, to solve many of the common microservices problems, we need a robust microservices framework that actually supports uh, some of these characteristics, such as agile development with DevOps and best practices, built-in service governance, multiple language support, high performance and scalability. And we also think that those are the priorities that we need to work to help many industries to do a digital transformation. So here is some information about the size and the vitality of the TARS community. So the TARS Foundation was launched in March 2020, and currently we have 10 members with ARM and Tencent as our premier members. And we also have uh, as a general member, Aftership, Ampere, Kong, API7, Zenlayer, and EOLinker. And as an associated member, we have Nanjing University and Haman Nunjan College from University of Delhi. Uh, so far, we have more than 30 projects with um, 12, 000, more than 12,000 active developers using TARS, and also more than 100 companies <clears throat> using TARS, including uh, in different industries, including edge computing, esports, fintech, uh, streaming, and many more. So right now we have more than a thousand contributors from different companies contributing to our GitHub repository as well. And you can be one of them. So concerning what I previously mentioned about the TARS Foundation mission. Um, so this is the microservice ecosystem that we are building and upgrading to build uh, for our community. As you can see here at the bottom, our ecosystem supports different infrastructure um, we also support many development frameworks and service governance services and multiple programming languages. <clears throat> we also have uh, integrated DevOp, the DevOps tools, such as code management, configurations, integration, continuous delivery, and continuous deployment. And on top of everything, we have a great potential to host different applications, such as applications for edge computing, uh, big data, and deep learning. And to quickly sum up here what I've mentioned so far. So TARS is a major high performance framework that supports different functionalities and it's already been used by many companies for years. And this microservice ecosystem here uh, is what we envision for the TARS um, project. So <clears throat> this is a timeline of achievements and milestones made by the TARS Foundation in 2020. 
And I'd like to show that the Tars Foundation is constantly making progress and to grow, to grow our ecosystem. So for example, a set of tools such as the TARS Gateway, the TARS Benchmark, and the TARS JMeter have been open sourced in 2020 to, to help to grow our uh, microservice ecosystem. And we are also creating opportunities to engage with our communities, such as having meetups and different events in different countries to have conversations about microservices and other technology trends. So previously I presented to you the microservices ecosystem. And now here I present the complete landscape in which we envision to incorporate our microservices ecosystem with other open source projects in the near future. So we divided our landscape into four layers and the bottom one in the, is the infrastructure layer that includes different hardware, hardware chips, cloud and containers. And we also support additionally programming languages in order to fulfill the different needs of developers working in different teams. So moving up, we have the storage and protocol layers. Then we have the platform layer that enforces business logic. And for that, we are aiming at building a framework with service discovery, service mesh, logging, monitoring, configuration, and many more. In the upper layer, we have the application layer that includes API gateway, deep learning, edge computing, and also the TARS lab. So basically here, the TARS landscape is constantly updating. So if you're interested uh, in learning more about it, you can check this URL here. And we have an inter interactive landscape where you can click on each project to know more about it. And here we have the TARS Foundation greenhouse, uh, which is basically what we are currently supporting. So for the TARS lab, we have TARS Benchmark, TARS JMeter, Tools, Java Start, and the TARS Open Testing Lab. For platform, we are currently supporting TARS Framework, TCR, Log, Monitor, and Gateway. For storage and protocol, we have TARS TUP Protocol and Zcash. For infrastructure, we have the Kubernetes TARS, which is a Kubernetes native solution for TARS. And then we can also deploy TARS via Docker, as I mentioned before. And concerning the supported programming languages, we support C++, Go, Java, Node.js, and PHP. So the TARS Foundation is actually quite active and we typically do a lot of events and activities with our community. So to promote communication among contributors and members, we have different mailing lists dedicated to our community so that we can have more discussion to exchange ideas about microservices and other technologies. Um, for Meetup, we typically host one every two months to meet developers part of the TARS community. And also it's a, a way to encourage discussions about microservices trends. And conferences are bigger events that we and our sponsors host to share technologies and achievements. So please stay tuned to hear about our next event. Here are some pictures and posters of the past events we have participated or hosted. So in the upper left side, we show the Linux Foundation Day um, at Tencent. So Tencent is the premier member of the TARS Foundation and we were able to host this event along with the governing board of the Linux Foundation with in Tencent, and we have we had more than 200 developers at the conference, and the press release reached more than 40,000 people. And the one in the upper right is the Cloud Native Plus Open Source Summit in China in 2020. So this was a large scale online event, and more than 60,000 people attended to this conf conference. Uh, during this event, we had representative of our members. Um, including ARM, Ampere, API 7, and they talked about their use cases. And we also had our maintainers sharing their, about their projects and their experience. Uh, we also had the microservice, uh, TARS Microservices Day uh, as part of the Linux Foundation training. And we had discussions about Kubernetes, Hyperledger, and TARS. And in this event, more than 100 people attended. 
uh, to this online event. And we actually expect to host TARS Microservices Day event every year. Uh, so we are also planning to host more meetups in the near future. And currently we had one meetup in India and one in Canada. And due to the pandemic, we were unable to host a lot of um, in-person events, but hopefully we'll be able to meet the TARS community in person. So I hope that by now you have a better idea about the TARS Foundation and you might be interested in participating further in the TARS community. So next I will explain the different ways that people can get involved with our community and also join the foundation. So at the individual level, we have different roles for people to showcase their abilities in our community. Um, basically, we have maintainers, commit committer, contributor, and ambassador. And these are the major forms of contribution to the TARS um, community. To become a contributor, you just need to submit a pull request to our GitHub repository and also have a merged branch. Then if you want to become a committer, you need to present more significant contributions, such as fixing a major bug or developing new features. And by becoming a committer, you have the right to basically oversee the code quality of the project. And you have to ch the chance to join our project management committee, which is the technical governance board of our technical projects. And the next level is the maintainer. So maintainers usually they have a deeper knowledge about TARS technology and they can actively put projects forward to ensure code quality. And they also have the chance to become of the, to be part of the PMC and to join the TOC, which is the technical oversight committee. And that is a foundation level governance board. So, and then we have the ambassadors like me, uh, which is, uh, are TAR enthusiasts. So ambassadors participating by giving speeches uh, at community events, writing technical articles, and also helping to organize uh, community events. So now let's talk about some resources from the TAR Foundation to the community. So if you are completely new uh, to TARS, you should take advantage of this free training course building microservices platforms with TARS. And this is a collaboration between the TARS Foundation and the Linux Foundation training. And it's a hands-on course to teach people how to develop microservices and to quickly help to get a sense of the TARS platform and use it. Uh, we also have the TARS certification that was created as a partnership with the Linux Foundation. And uh, we have either the enterprise level certification for our member companies and the developer certification. So currently we have the beta developer certification and I encourage you to, to register for the certification and you do get a badge for the beta certification and you get, uh, it's free to participate and you can also get the final certification once it's ready to demonstrate your skills, your knowledge and your abilities to use TARS to develop microservices. And we also welcome outside uh, open source projects to join the TARS Foundation. So the TARS Foundation is establishing a series of mechanisms for different open source projects to join. And then we basically have an incubation process. So basically after a project has agreed to join the TARS Foundation, we will work on projects to help them to reach maturation according to the project circumstances in order to go the projects further. Uh, right now we have a project governance model that provides a general set of requirements for projects to join the foundation, which are basically code, license and copyright, uh, license and copyright releases, quality community, consensus building and independence. Uh, so to sum up, projects join to be part of the incubation process after meeting all the requirements as defined by the criteria on the project governance model, uh, project will move to graduation. And during the whole maturation process, our governance board will help the projects to grow and build their community and assist their overall development. 
So I'd like to encourage you to donate your projects to the TARS Foundation, and you can do that by scanning this QR code or through the TARS uh, Foundation website. So now I will explain how our membership works. So basically we have three types of membership. So member of different levels, uh, they have their respective benefits in different areas of the project. So we have associated member, general member, and premier member. And the benefits, they vary. So here is a quick view of the membership uh, benefits. Uh, we have community engagement that includes, and that includes uh, speaking opportunities in our ambassador program and many more. And by joining the TARS Foundation projects, also join the Linux Foundation. And that allows organizations to engage with the larger open source community. So members of the TARS Foundation, they also, they're also able to increase their network and help to shape the microservices ecosystem by, uh, they can help to shape the training course, the certificate programs, and also ensure that the version that the project supports is the correct one for the APIs. And they also can help to provide technical guidelines to our technical governance board. And also projects they can uh, showcase um, their, their tools and help us to organize events to reach a bigger audience, increasing uh, your brand awareness. So companies also join the TARS Foundation as end users. Uh, and end users can not only get brand exposure via the TARS channels, but they can also can get opportunity to engage in conversations with our members to have potential collaborator, collab collaborations or other opportunities. Um, we also welcome companies to share their case study uh, with us, showing how TARS is helping them to address the challenges that they face. And you can actually find different case studies here in our website. So take a look at it if you're interested. So that's pretty much it I have for today. And yeah, if you have any questions about the TARS or TARS Foundation, feel free to ask here on the Q&A um, chat or to contact us via our channels. And thank you so much for your time. Let me see if you have any, if we have any question. Any question? So what type of questions the exam will ask? So basically the exam asks questions about um, development of TARS. So questions about the source code, about the protocols that TARS accept, um, yeah, how to do a specific kinds of development with the TARS framework. So to answer some of the question, those questions, as a beginner, I recommend like people to take the, the course for beginners that I mentioned before uh, in the Linux Foundation website, and that you can get a little bit of sense of the TARS framework. Then you start to develop some applications with it. And yeah, it will be basically questions about development with the TARS framework. Yeah, and to add on to that, so the exam is going to be a multiple choice exam that lasts up around like 90 minutes. And the questions will be like, like to better prepare for the exam, it's best for you to like go through our online TARS training course. And then also go through the resources that, that are available on our GitHub repository. Yep. Yeah, good question. Any other question? Okay, so if we don't have more questions, maybe I'll handle that back to the Linux Foundation. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much, Isabella, for your time today. And thank you everyone for joining us. Just a quick reminder that this recording will be up on the Linux Foundation's YouTube page later today. So we hope you will join us for future webinars. Have a wonderful day.
拜。嗯，拜拜。